Good morning and happy Friday. Welcome to another segment of Mornings in Corning. I am joined by Angela Niverados, who is a fifth and sixth grade teacher at Horseheads. Angela, thank you so much for joining me Thanks today. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Of course. So just tell me a little bit about yourself. Are you from this area originally? No, I'm not from here originally. I'm from a little town called Roscoe, New York, which is about two hours east of here. Um, and I moved up here for college and stayed. Okay. So how long have you been a teacher for? I just finished my 11th year teaching. Well, have you been at Horseheads this whole time or have you bounced around? No, I've bounced around a little bit. I started out at a private school, Holy Family, here in Elmira, and then I taught for Elmira City School District, and I've taught for Horseheads for the last four years. Oh, wow. So, what do you teach at Horseheads now? I teach uh, fifth and sixth grade art at Horseheads, and I've done that for the last four years as well. So, what does your day to day kind of look like in terms of what you teach fifth and sixth graders at Horseheads? The last few years have been a little different, but typically I try and hit as many different mediums as I can so students really get to explore and learn what works best for them because there's so many different kinds of art, so I really want students to find what they love the best. And yeah, so as you mentioned, it's been a little different the past few years. How did it go from teaching during COVID? Like, what was that like teaching art during a time like that? It was a huge challenge um, teaching digitally. I had to find like a lot of new different ways and ways to find materials that all students can use, whether they were here in the classroom with me or at home learning over Zoom. So it was a big learning curve, but I think it's made me a better teacher for it. And to be back in person now and teaching art in person, how did that feel? So great. <laughs> I'm so glad to be back in person. It is a lot different being able to work like one-on-one -on -one with a student or really be able to evaluate how they're doing and actually see what they're doing makes a huge difference. So do you teach pottery and ceramics? or um, what? Before we left for the pandemic, we were in the middle of a ceramics project, but we haven't unfortunately done any ceramics since we've come back because I've just been so unsure of whether we were going to go remote or not. And as I don't know, some of you may know, ceramics is a bit of a process. There's a lot of steps, so we need a good, solid, uninterrupted chunk of time to do a ceramics project. So maybe next year. Okay, awesome. Well, um, Angela, thank you so much for joining me, and um, I can't wait to learn more about the artwork that you brought in. Hey, thank you. Of course. Okay, stick with us. More news and weather coming up after the break. Good morning and happy Friday. Welcome back to another segment of Mornings in Corning. I am joined by Angela Niferatos, who is a fifth and sixth grade teacher at Horseheads. Angela, again, thank you so much for being here and joining me. Um, so let's talk about you and how long you've been doing art for. When did you start taking an interest in it? I actually didn't start taking an interest until I got to college. I started as an English education major and promptly switched my first semester. <laughs> um, I took a few drawing classes and I felt like I improved a lot enough to really explore it some more and change my major. And I didn't take a ceramics class until um, my sophomore year. And since then I've fallen in love with it and I can't leave it alone. <laughs> so did you have a teacher that inspired you or a professor or someone in college? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I took my, most of my undergrad classes with Doug Holker, who's since retired from Elmira College, but I've also taking a lot of uh, classes with Chris Longwell as well who's currently the ceramics professor and he's excellent as well. Okay and so in colleges what were those programs like especially when you started ceramics kind of what were you doing? There? It, it was a really like community-based class you would have students that came in and out from all different kinds of majors um, because you always have to take an art elective so you would get nursing majors and art majors coming together and like really seeing a different side of everyone which was really nice and it, having that friendly atmosphere really helps you grow as an artist because you have all this great feedback from all your fellow classmates. So you are a teacher also, did you know going into college you wanted to be a teacher and then you switched to wanting to teach art? Is that how that happened kind yep, of? Yep, that's right. Um, I loved reading too, which is why I started with English because it felt the most familiar, but after being able to explore and take a new class, I just switched. Okay, and so let's talk about some of the pieces that you brought in today. Um, just tell me a little bit about them and what it takes to make something like this. Um, it's one of those processes where you have every opportunity to mess it up. <laughs> um, and I'm a very tactile person, which is one of the reasons why I've gone with clay. Uh, my family is from Greece, and a lot of that influences the colors and textures that you see here. And also the professor I had, Chris Longwell, does a lot of textures in his work, and it's really influenced me as well. As far as the process of doing this, you start with essentially dirt, and you get to mold it. I do a lot of wheel throwing, and then once it has gotten to a state called leather hard, you can carve it and add all those great textures or additions like on this piece here, all these are added. Um, and then it has to be fired and glazed and fired again. Wow, okay. And that one um, on the end here, it's really pretty. Is that like a lid? The, or yes. what is it? Okay. so a lot of these are lidded. So this is a traditionally lidded jar with a flange. Um, and then this one here is also lidded and I throw this one as one hollow piece. And then after it's set up, I cut it apart. So you can see here, I can lift it up and it's hard to see the scene. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here again. I really appreciate it. Um, stick with us. More news and weather coming up after the break. Good morning and happy Friday. Welcome back to another segment of Mornings and Corning. I am joined by Angela Nivaratos, who is a fifth and sixth grade teacher at Horseheads. Angela, thank you so much for joining me yeah, today. Of course. <laughs> so I understand that you're going to be opening up a studio. Just tell me a little bit about that. Yes, we per recently purchased a building on uh, 14th Street in Elmire Heights, and we've been slowly renovating it. We live upstairs, but we've been turning the downstairs into a studio. I currently work down there right now, but eventually I'd like to open it up to the public for a public art studio for ceramics. So what made you want to open it up and make it public? Um, I just l I love teaching. That's what I do for my job, but it's a lot easier to share ceramics in a specialized space. So being able to do that there would be, you know, a kind of a dream of mine. <laughs> okay. Is this something that you've always kind of wanted to do? Or I know that you obviously haven't started doing ceramics until college, but... Not necessarily, but the more like I grow my studio, the more I want to share it. So it has was just fortuitous to find this incredible space and it just seems a waste to not share it with everyone else as well. <laughs> okay, so you want to teach classes and just teach people about ceramics? Is that what would yeah, happen in there? I'd like to open it up to all ages, so classes for children, classes for adults, um, everyone needs a hobby and sometimes it's hard to find out what you really like to do unless you take a class, so that's where we're going. <laughs> okay, so is it going to be ceramics? I guess I know you said before that you draw too, So, but is it just going to be ceramics? That you're I would teaching like there? it to be a space for all kinds of things. So primarily ceramics, but it'd be open for other instructors to come in. And I do drawing as well or printmaking. Um, but you know, I'd like to host all kinds of artists, almost make it like a meeting place for artists to come as well. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me again. And stick with us, more news and weather coming up after the break. Good morning and happy Friday. Welcome back to another segment of Mornings and Corning. I am joined by Angela Nipparatos, who is a fifth and sixth grade teacher at Horseheads. Angela, again, thank you so much for being here and joining me. Um, so talk to me. You told me earlier that you have a show coming up in the spring of 2020. Tell me a little bit about that. I'm so excited. The Arts of the Southern Finger Lakes is a great community on Market Street, and I'll be having a solo show next spring in 2023. Okay, awesome. And so because of that you're not going to be in any other shows until then because you're preparing for this one correct mostly this summer where i'd usually be participating in lots of great local vendor shows i'm working on the show for the spring but i will be doing some more local vendor shows in the fall and for the holidays okay and how exciting is it to have a solo show during this <laughs> it's really exciting it makes you feel like you've made it i know a lot of artists experience imposter syndrome <laughs> which is just like feeling like you're not really there but doing something like this kind of is validating in a way so it's really nice to do this so what exactly are you doing to prepare for this show? Um, I have a concept in which, because I experience learning and teaching all the time, my show kind of revolves around learning and nature. So the pieces that I'm planning, I sketch them out, I plan them out, and I try and make them as close to my sketches as I can, but things always go awry, I guess. Or sometimes they change for the better, like you explore and experiment. So I'm just really immersing myself in this process for the summer. Okay, great. And so if someone, you know, wants to see more of your work or is interested in your pieces, where is the best place they can go to check that out? The best place is probably my Instagram account. It's the most active. My handle is Achilles Wheel. Um, you can also check out my website, which is AchillesWheelStudio.com. Okay, awesome. Well, Angela, thank you so much for being here and joining me. Thanks for having me. It was great. Of course, and your pieces are beautiful. So definitely check her out. Um, but that does it for Mornings and Corning. Mornings and weather coming up after the break.